Good morning. I'm Dr. David Richardson, a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. And right now I'm discussing a series of videos on the holistic approach to treating glaucoma. So looking at things other than just intraocular pressure, also known as IOP. So today I'd like to talk about diet and nutrition and some of the research that's available on that. All right, let's get going. So it will come as no surprise to those who have watched the first few of my videos that I'm going to state that anything that's good for your cardiovascular health is also good for your optic nerve and uh, potentially for either preventing or um, helping to treat uh, glaucoma. So what's the, uh, the available research that suggests that that's the case and not just my opinion? Most of the research that's available is uh, unfortunately just uh, observational research. Now what that means is uh, that there's a group of people that were followed, uh, often these are nurses in many of the studies, and uh, associations are made. So pretty much everything they do is looked at from diet, exercise, um, and then correlations are discovered. So one of the the larger studies that looked at diet and uh, the development of glaucoma, or this is one of the things that's looked at. Generally, these studies have multiple reports that come from them, each one breaking down a certain association with a particular disease. But in this particular uh, study that looked at diet in black women, uh, in this study, and the association with uh, development of glaucoma, there was a protective benefit associated with vegetables and fruits. Now, the study broke that down a bit. Uh, what the overall suggestion was, was that those who had at least three servings of vegetables and fruits had a decreased risk of developing glaucoma. Uh, but of course, you'd like to know which fruits and which vegetables. And so they did break that down a bit. Uh, those who had at least three servings of oranges or peaches had a decreased risk of developing glaucoma. Um, now, it, whether or not orange juice or um, canned uh, fruits provide the same benefit is, is not, uh, not as certain. And there was some suggestion in the study that it had to be the whole fresh fruit. Uh, what else? Uh, kale. Kale and collard greens. I uh, mentioned that in an early video for the uh, lutein zeaxanthin content. But uh, kale and collard greens uh, also provided a benefit. Now, interestingly, you only needed two servings of kale or collard greens a week in order to uh, have the protective benefit. Now, there, there are other um, vegetables that uh, are worth considering in terms of trying to prevent glaucoma. So in general, the green leafy vegetables, uh, which once again are also just good for general retinal health, seem to provide some benefit and protection from glaucoma with the optic nerve. Um, in particular, those vegetables that are high in what are called nitrates, not to be confused with nitrites, which you find in salami and processed meats, uh, deli meats, things like that. But the nitrates are actually converted by the body into nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide has a uh, beneficial effect on blood flow, perfusion to the optic nerve. And it, indeed, there's a recently uh, FDA-approved medication, Visolta, uh, which is a combination of a prostaglandin analog, which tends to be a very effective class of intraocular pressure lowering medications, plus a nitric oxide releaser. So essentially, it's prostaglandin analog plus uh, a source of nitric oxide. And that both provides an additional intraocular pressure lowering effect, but may actually also have a neuroprotective effect in, in that it may uh, improve the blood supply to the optic nerve. So, uh, so what else? Uh, there, there are a class of, um, of 
molecules called anthocyanins uh, that are found in black currants. And uh, black currants uh, have been shown in at least one study to stabilize visual fields. And since in the treatment of glaucoma, what we are trying to do is maintain good vision. Uh, anything that can stabilize uh, visual fields is worth, worth considering. Uh, then another source of anthocyanins is uh, eggplant. Um, turns out that as little as 10 grams per day, I don't know how many servings that is, uh, uh, can provide some benefit. Um, eggplant is also a good source of vitamin C. You do of note is, is that you do need the purple skin of the eggplant. So uh, it's not just the meat, the skin is important in order to get this benefit. omega-3 fatty acids, which I generally recommend for my patients with a type of dry eye. Uh, they don't help all types of dry eye, but uh, dry eye associated with my bony and gland dysfunction can benefit from omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids uh, seem to provide some uh, benefit in terms of blood flow to the optic nerve. Now, there may also be some pressure lowering benefit and um, in order to get a source of omega-3 fatty acids in the diet you really need to eat fatty fish at least three times a week so what types of uh, fish are fatty fish uh, wild caught salmon uh, sardines mackerel uh, tuna oh, did i say uh herring herring so if you're not getting fatty fish in your diet at least three times a week, then you really should consider supplementing with a high quality omega-3 fatty acid. Um, yeah, generally, I, I just recommend you stay away from the store brands. Uh, there are some uh, high quality uh, brand names such as Nordic Naturals. Uh, there are supplements that are formulated specifically for um, eye diseases, uh, and those are available at either an eye doctor's office or online. There is another chemical, the flavonoids. Flavonoids are naturally occurring antioxidants and these are found in such things as cocoa, so in chocolate, and uh, tea. Now if you're thinking about chocolate, uh, I recommend that you stick to dark chocolate so you limit the the number of uh, carbohydrates because what you don't want to do of course is uh, take something to improve your glaucoma but end up uh, making your uh, blood sugar higher or uh, cardiovascular um, issues uh, worse so dark chocolate and a very small amount uh, one or two squares a day not one or two bars one or two squares um, other things that are relatively high in flavonoids, um, tea. Now green tea gets all the credit, uh, but black tea also has a high flavonoid content and benefit there. And um, the interesting thing about flavonoids is that they may actually help uh, protect the optic nerve and decrease the progression of visual field loss. So. Uh, if, uh, if you're not already a tea drinker, there are all kinds of great uh, flavored uh, and tasting teas out there. I highly recommend that you have uh, one to two cups of tea a day. Uh, it's actually probably reasonable for most of us to cut down on our coffee and swap over to uh, tea, which has a lower caffeine content. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna mention here is something that you're probably not getting in your diet, but it's really exciting, at least in animal studies. There's no, uh, no human studies that I'm aware of yet that look at this protective benefit, at least not a high quality study, but the goji berry uh, extract was fed to rats and these rats were um, uh, essentially modified so that their pressures went up uh, really high and the goji berry extract protected the retinal ganglion cells those are the cells that are actually damaged in glaucoma protected them from the damage that would normally occur with elevated intraocular pressure so that really exciting early laboratory research 
but it needs to be replicated in humans, of course, without actually uh, actively increasing the pressure in humans. Uh, that would not be an ethical study. So anyway, this has uh, been a long video, but I know it's a video uh, that has information that's of interest to uh, many of those who have followed my written work on online. So I felt like it was worth the extra time and detail today. Anyway, I hope you agree and I uh, look forward to my next commute with you. All right, take care.